Hello everybody, this is Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number. I knew this was going to happen to me one of these days. I forgot to look up what number it is because it's been a while. But we can look it up really quick. Last one was 78, so this one is video screencast number 79. I think I'm going to call it um, fully running jQuery animations or fully executing jQuery animations, something like that. I wrote an article on this subject back in December, but it's come up again and other people have mentioned it since then. Um, and I thought it would be a cool screencast because it's kind of a hands-on kind of deal. So uh, I was planning on preparing for it and then I didn't get a chance this afternoon. So I'm going to wing it. Yes. Let's close that. This is the demo page I have started for what we are going to do. Um, you, this is just the header that I've kind of chucked on all demo pages now to, you know, for some branding, you know. Um, but you can see this, hopefully you can see this kind of gray chunk right here. Let's look at the code that's making this up so far. There is this, there's an index.php file, blah, blah. It, has, it links to a style sheet. It loads the jQuery library. And just as a quick side note, jQuery 1.4 was released just last week. It looks really, really cool. I haven't dug into it a ton yet. I know there's one cool thing like the creation syntax. I was looking and I was like, wow, that's really neat. Uh, we probably won't do anything specific in this example that uses anything that's new to jQuery 1.4, but we are going to be using jQuery. We link out to our example.javascript. That's just where we're going to be writing our own JavaScript code. Blah, blah. Include the header. Include the footer. But here's those five divs, five empty divs. They all have a common class name, and they all have a unique class name. So some things, and you know, I use this kind of thing a lot. I was surprised. I just had, did a speech recently that people didn't realize that you could have even multiple class names on something. If you didn't know that, indeed you can. You can have as many class names. Uh, within reason, there's some extreme limit to it. You can have as many class names as you want on a thing. Uh, and it's it's smart to use in this way. This is for common things that these are all going to share, and these are for unique things. You don't have to repeat yourself in the CSS a whole lot. Let's look at the CSS. Uh, blah, blah, reset. These are the things that these boxes have in common. They have a width of 100 pixels. They have a height of 20 pixels. They have a background color, which we're going to be resetting, but this is just the default one, and they're all floated to the left. So when we look at this in the browser, this is actually five boxes all floated to the left. What we're going to do with those boxes is do some very simple jQuery animation to expand their height uh, up and down when you roll over them. Uh, but just to, to give them each some individual flair or whatever so we can visualize this thing better, we needed to give colors. This is one of the things I wanted to do before I hit record on the screencast, but I didn't have time. I have somewhere to be later tonight, so I'm kind of trying to hurry up. But... Uh, Ah, blah, blah. Anyway, there was happened to be five of them. I'm like, I need five colors randomly. One of the best places to come for color inspiration, and it just so happens that all their themes are five colors, is this uh, cooler. I think they're calling it, or maybe they're just calling it color. I don't know, but it's spelled cooler. Dot Adobe dot com. Uh, and there's all kinds of beautiful themes in here that you can click on. It's just really nice, I think. And then if you click, it shows bigger, so you can just get a full view of all the colors. Let's just pick one and see if we can get the hex codes from them. Let's see if this will be easy. Yeah, I should be able to copy and paste these out of here, huh? I'm going to just go back and forth a little bit here and paste hex codes. Oh, it didn't copy. Firefox. Why won't you copy? Oh, it not only didn't copy, but it screwed up the color. <clears throat> we'll try. If if this becomes uh, too laborious here, we'll give up. Can I right-click copy? <clears throat> I just want to get some pretty colors in there. I'm hitting paste. It just, it's not copying. I wonder if it's this... Uh, just today, I bought this like copy thing that's supposed to... like like keeps everything that you copy okay whatever apparently you can't copy and paste out of this thing or i'm just too stupid to figure out so let's just pick some random colors ccc knee 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 
Um, six, 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 nine, 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 whatever. So that they have some different colorness to them. I banish you. Uh, reload, and they'll all have different shades of gray. Okay, that's perfect. So now you can tell them apart. Let's write some jQuery to do the expanding and contracting. The whole point of the screencast, if you're still with me here, is that there are some issues, there are some problems when you're trying to do what we're going to do. And we're, I'm going to show you what that problem is and then show you some cool solutions for solving it. Or at least what I consider to be a problem as a somewhat detail-oriented designer. We're going to target each one of those top boxes. So how you do that in jQuery is you open up a jQuery object, use the same jQuery or the same selector as you would in CSS, top box. That's how you get all of them. And you say, uh, when they are hovered over, run this function. So that's what's going on here. Do something when each of these top boxes are hovered over. Uh, for efficiency, we'll do something like this. Uh, that means that we don't have to use the this selector. So anytime we use L now, it's going to refer to the 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 particular, what did I call them, top box. That would have been a troubleshooting issue. The particular top box that we're rolling over. Um, so we'll say um, L dot animate its height to... Uh, Whether well, they're 20 pixels now, let's go all the way to 100 pixels. Now, the hover function also has, let's see, this ends. Uh, it has two parameters. You can pass it two functions. One of them fires when the element is hovered over, and one of them fires when you hover off. So it's a mouse on and a mouse out, or mouse over and mouse out. We're going to do the same exact thing, only we'll animate it back to 20 pixels. Let's hit save, and if I didn't screw this up, which I almost certainly did. Oh, I didn't. See, look at how easy that is to, let's say this this could be like a, I don't know what, maybe a cool menu for the top of a website uh, to have these animations, and just feel how smooth that runs. Mouse, mouse over it, ooh. Ooh, so smooth. I, I hope that the frame rate on the screencast doesn't ruin this just silky smoothness to this thing. Um, but, you know, if, if a lot of you have worked with jQuery animations before, you're already like, oh, you're doing something wrong. Well, what I'm doing wrong is, uh, look at me mouse over this a bunch of times, and now I'll mouse away. I'm not moving the mouse at all right now, but my menu is still freaking out. That's called queuing up. It's queuing up those mouse ons and mouse outs, and it's running them when it completes the previous thing that it was doing. So it's queuing up those things, and it's really kind of nasty. I mean, look at that. I mean, it's, I just don't like that behavior. It feels like your page is going wacky, even with just like two or three mouse overs, which you can easily do just casually mousing around the page it just feels awkward and it doesn't feel right so he, the, one of the most standard ways to deal with this problem is to go in here and before you animate it uh put a stop see this is the beauty of jquery chaining is you can call multiple functions just in a row like that so before i animate i'm gonna hit stop now let's go around i'll reload the page and see what happens now. I can mouse over it a bunch of different times, and they don't queue up. As soon as I mouse out, it's done. But look at look at at what cost. It 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 um it, it doesn't run the full animation. So like I was saying, like this page's title, I want to I want to get back to fully running animations. I want to say that when I mouse on and I mouse off of this thing, that it's gonna expand all the way to 100 pixels, the maximum of that animation, and back down to 20 pixels, no matter what happens. Right now, these aren't fully running. If you mouse over them fast, they only complete half of their animation. And that's fine. That might be fine in some circumstances. But in this circumstance, in most circumstances that I find in my day-to-day -day life as a designer, I don't want it to run a halvesy animation. I want it to run the full effect of the animation. So... What are some solutions? So this is the article I wrote. This was back, whatever, a month ago. 
I decided to try and tackle this issue because I've, th- I've been thinking about it a bunch of times. So I here's me, blah, blah, blah. This is the problem. Probably explaining it better with words than I'm doing with my mouth right now. And I came up with a bunch of different solutions for it. One of them was to use all these fancy selectors to make sure that it's not being animated or it is being animated or it sets little data points of where it is in the animation. Um, check out view demo and this is where i was doing all my explorations of what's going on so this is this is where we started at first remember this is the it's very smooth the animation's complete all the way but they queue up which we don't like that's what we're trying to prevent uh here's one with with the stops in place does it but the animations don't fully run um, here's ones where I was able to get the animations to finish all the way and close all the way, but it does it jerkily. See how jerky that is? That's no good. Uh, I've got to figure out where it, it didn't cue. I wasn't using, I'm not using stop here, but I'm using cue false on the animation. Basically it behaves the same way as stop does. So that wasn't working out. Um, in this one we use some kind of fancy, uh, uh array to keep data, to let's see what the problem is yeah there's some kind of a weird delay thing going on basically it is queuing them up still so that's not working i'm not sure that i wrote that one then there's a, a test and make sure it's not being animated so this works okay you know you can roll over all of them and they all complete their whole thing but let's see the problem with that is let's say i roll over all of them uh, see, it's 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 behaving weird. This is not ideal. I'm not sure why I left this one green. If you roll over all of them and then come back onto one, look at it. It's, I'm, I'm moused over it. What should it should be extended right now? My mouse is over the thing. Um, and so I guess this this was kind of the final answer for this article. As we're gonna, uh, we dequeued it and used stop and stuff. So I, I think for whatever reason back a month ago i decided that this was this was the nicest way and indeed it is not bad look at it i mean it's behaving pretty well you mouse over it and they come up and they make sure to run their whole animation and they don't queue up but i think it's it's still it's subject to this look my mouth mouse is over it but it is not extended all the way and that's that's the thing that I, that still makes this not a perfect solution so here's me spending like an entire day trying to figure this out in a million different things somebody does comment on this uh so thanks to what was his name ralph stoltz sorry if i pronounced that long but he is a smarter man than me and came up with this i'll click his solution he calls it hover flow uh, here's the problem. He's got the same demo. I was just like shocked when I saw this. I'm like, oh, that's so funny. This is uh, exactly what I was trying to do. And here's the problem with stop and whatever. So he wrote this whole plugin that is just for this thing. Now, now here's the, the good example. And I'm, we're going to go through and integrate this into our own example. But check this out. Uh, it doesn't queue up. The animation's finished the whole way. And if you end on three, look at it's it's sticking out it's at the it's at the expanded animation state oh it's so perfect and beautiful i don't even i can't even tell you exactly how it works but we are going to download it and i can tell you exactly how to integrate it because i've been using it on a variety of projects so where is it it's going to be on our my desktop hoverflow folder i don't think we really need any of his JavaScript, we will just use the Hoverflow plugin. I'll drop it in my JavaScript folder. And I will copy it. And when you use plugins like this, make sure to load the plugin before your own custom JavaScript. So we will do that. Only we'll name it. We'll copy and paste so we don't screw up. Uh, Copy, Chris. Use the copy command and paste it in so the plugin loads. And the best way when you're downloading a plugin like this to figure out how it works, and if you're all kind of, you know, whatever into this JavaScript thing, only you're kind of like me, and I'm, I'm getting good at this. I'm, you know, I would hope so, right? I've been writing jQuery for a while, but still, what I do is just open up the demo, check it out. 
see how they did it because uh, in their demo it probably is going to work. So there's you know that's the way that's the that's the way to do it. So here's some here's how it works. You notice it doesn't use the animate function anymore. It uses hover flow. It replaces animate with it. But there is some weird stuff going on. You got to pass the element into the function and then it grabs the element. And then inside these brackets is where you set up the animated things and you can use the same speed parameter. So it's a little different than how animate works, but it's still, you know, it uses hover and it uses the the mouse in and mouse out functions. So uh, uh, we can do that. It doesn't, doesn't look too complicated. It looks like there is, it can get a little complicated. It has some options if you want it to get there, but we'll just use the basic, the basic thing. So we'll keep this open as a reference and we'll replace our JavaScript with this JavaScript. So we're still using the hover function, only we need to pass the event into the function. So we'll put the little E in there like they did. And let's see if we can get some more room. Notice I use both Coda and TextMate. Just weird, I can never kind of make up my mind. Instead of using Animate, we're going to use, we're not going to need stop anymore. Gone. Gone. We're going to use hover flow instead. Hover flow. <clears throat> then the first thing you pass it is e.type for whatever reason. I can tell you I don't even quite understand that. But it doesn't matter. We're referencing working code to do this. <clears throat> then that and you know what let's see if it doesn't uh, I'm thinking that the speed parameter might even be optional so let's just that's all let's just save that and, and just see if it works I mean it might not I mean this is me we're talking about oh it is working so let's mouse off across and then I'll come back and I'm going to stay on this darkest gray one oops Oh, so nice, isn't it? It doesn't queue up. It runs the animations fully. And if you stop on one, it stays out. So nice and smooth. So that's using the Hover Flow plugin by... Shoot, what was his name? Ralph? Rolf? Why did I close that? Anyway... Thanks so much for creating this plugin. It's so nice. And if you use jQuery animations, which is a huge reason to use jQuery at all, I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there using jQuery. Why do you use a JavaScript library? Well, for one, animations are awesome. Two, it solves cross-browser differences a lot better. Three, it makes Ajax stuff really, really easy, which ties into the cross-browser thing, because that's a difficult thing to do without a JavaScript library. Just makes writing JavaScript easier. But... Uh, uh, if, if you're cool with writing JavaScript raw, still, you'll probably lean on a library when you do animations like this. I mean, I can't imagine the difficulty of writing um, an animation like this in raw JavaScript. It would be really hard. And look at how ridiculously easy it is in JavaScript. Personally, I think something like this should be built into the jQuery core. I mean, I'm not smart enough to be playing around with these jQuery core people. But it just seems to make sense to me. I mean, this is such a smoother, better operation than anything I was able to do with a day's worth of work and trying to figure out how to do this without a plugin. So anyway, without, I'm not going to drag this on any longer. I'm just going to quit it. We'll do a short one this week. Hopefully this is useful to you and how to use a jQuery plugin, how to make animations better. Oh, is there anything I want to plug? I guess not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go plug-free. Nobody advertises on my little screencast anymore. It's been a long time, hasn't it? If somebody has a product or service they want me to talk about on here, and you should send it to me, and if I think it's not total crap, I will talk about it on here for money. I don't make a lot of money on this, folks. Believe me. I'm just saying. It's been a long time since we've had an advertiser. All right, I'm done. See you later next time. Bye.